Now and four to catch an Irish summer salmon, you need a winning combination, and that's the angling experience. The River Erith is in Connemara in the west of Ireland. It's fairly typical of the spate rivers in this part of the world and has excellent fishing for salmon and sea trout. It's not very wide and not very long, just about eight miles from its source in a mountain lock to the tide. But they're eight steep miles, a gradient so steep that fish as large as salmon can only get up the falls and shallow rapids when there's a flood. The Erif once belonged to Lord Brayburn, and he and his guests used to stay in Ashley Lodge. Today the river belongs to the Irish state, which means it's open to everyone at quite reasonable rates. Its season opens on the 1st of April, and there's a small run of heavy spring salmon. But it's essentially a summer river, with a great grilse run. Christopher Pringle has a passion for salmon fly angling. He's using a floating line on his 17-foot rod, which gives him great control over the drift of the fly. Early season conditions pose problems for the salmon angler. When the water is more than 48 degrees Fahrenheit, salmon are much more likely to come up to a surface lure. But today, the temperature is 48 on the button, so will they come up or stay down? Rain's on the way, and Chris decides to change to a sinking line. A lot of salmon fishing amounts to a series of educated guesses. The light and the temperature are dropping as the belt of rain comes closer, and Chris's experience suggests that this requires a larger fly fished nearer the riverbed. It's all part of a trial and error process where the angler tries to come up with a combination that will persuade a fish that doesn't feed in fresh water to take a bunch of feathers and hair into its mouth. They say a really dedicated fisherman becomes a bit mad. He certainly needs massive perseverance. But Chris isn't just being stubborn. The classic time to catch a salmon is on a falling flood. But there's also a short period when the river starts to rise, when the fish are alert, preparing to run and ready to take a fly. The fish is obviously heavy, and it's fighting strongly and deeply. A dogged battle that indicates it may be one of the springers that run the river early in the season. A fish of more substance than the summer grills, which have only spent one winter feeding at sea.
It's netted by Jim Stafford, the fishery manager, and does indeed turn out to be a springer, a fine fish of 12 pounds, above average for this water. The rain brings with it the first spate of the season, surging down the glaciated valley, bringing a message of urgency and movement to the waiting salmon. Floods like this are vital to a small salmon river, clearing a path for the returning fish and sending a chemical invitation far out to sea. Great changes take place in the Connemara landscape over the next couple of weeks. The seasonal progression from spring to summer affects the whole of nature. Peter O'Reilly works for the Central Fisheries Board. He's also an angling writer and game fishing instructor who fishes the area as often as he can. Chris is back as well, and their anticipation is high. There are plenty of fish in the river, though angling conditions aren't easy. I think I'll go up and fish this down behind you, Chris. Fair enough, it has gone a wee bit, uh, a bit dead now. I see you've changed to a sinking line, is that right? I have, yeah. Um, I don't know, I've never had as much success with the, um, the floating line as the sinking line. Where I've been fishing anyway, I'm not sure about this river. Yeah. You probably but, disagree uh, with me. I saw two fish down there. It'll be interesting to see how they react to your yeah, well, you, 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 you've done them with floating the line over floating them. Line, yeah. yeah. I'll move up now. I'll change to a smaller fly. I think that water is dropping. Yeah. The light's not very good at no. the moment back up behind us here. Where would you see those fish? Opposite the... Yeah. Out from the point. Out from the point, yeah. So, so they might... We'll try them with the sinking one anyway and see what happens. There's two of them there now. Just take one, leave the other for me. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, good luck. <laughs> the river is divided into nine beats, which are alternated on a daily basis and usually shared between two rods. Peter moves upstream to the head of the beat. The first job here is the crucial one of fly selection. A lot of factors have to be weighed up. Perhaps the most important thing to get right is the size of the fly. They get progressively smaller as the summer advances and the water gets warmer and shallower. There's also the rate at which it will sink, the amount of dressing, the pattern and the colour. This is the moment that separates the good salmon fly fishermen from the not so good. But Peter's one of the best. He's gone for an old favourite, a thunder and lightning tied on a single hook. Peter's double spay casting with the big fly rod to avoid problems with his back cast. A relaxed way of fishing in which the flex and reach of the rod do the hard work. He fishes with confidence because he's fishing known lies and this is one of the big secrets of success on any salmon river. Year after year, fish lie in the same places and can be caught from them. So an angler who knows these lies, has learned them from years of experience or has had them shown to him, has a huge advantage. Chris is using a totally different method of fishing the fly. With a little 10-foot Grilson sea trout rod, fairly stiff in the action, and the number eight sinking line, he casts square across the river and then immediately walks backwards, upstream along the bank. Usually he'll strip in line whilst he's walking. The line develops a slight belly and the fly drags, something to be avoided normally. The sinking line prevents any problems with surface wake. The fly suddenly appears in the fish's window of vision. The response is often fairly vicious. Uh, 
only a ghost, not, not a very big fish or anything. Typically, there are a lot of mistakes while backing up, as this method of fly fishing is called. But it can be a way of saving a blank day, and it should be better known. And well back from the bank with it. Almost all regular salmon anglers have had the experience of losing a fish they thought was theirs, often one which flipped back into the water at the last moment. It's not the sort of mistake you make twice. A nice grills. It took a Munro killer, a typical hair wing pattern. It's quite an austere dressing, using the simple mixtures of many modern low water flies. That's the one I think that did the damage this morning, the um, size 8 Munro killer on the treble, the Esmond Drury treble. Yes, I'll be using one of those myself in the morning, I think. Possibly a size 8 on a single hook. There's a saying around here that the further up the river you go, the smaller the fly you should use. And um, a nice little Munro on a single hook, I think, is just what I need in the morning. Well, do you think and that's because of the, the more streamy water or...? Um, it's presumably shallower anyway. Yes, I think it's, uh, they can that, see the small flies easier. On the higher beats, the water runs off faster, yeah. and uh, it's a mistake to use too big a fly. Too big. I noticed uh, you use a sinking line quite a bit when uh, I, when I would use a floater. Well, there's a number of reasons, Peter. Um, for, first of all, it's a, um, it, it's a jolly sight nicer to fish with a, with, a, with a floating line. But I, I always feel that um, it casts a bit of a shadow. First of all, and secondly. If you're fishing a light fly with a floating line and, there's any, and you're fishing it in any sort of a glide, um, you're going to get the fly skating across the top of the water, which I think is, is bad news. So I prefer really to fish um, a sunk line with the fly, the light fly. So it's really fishing probably at the same depth, um, quite close to the surface. How would you rate a sink tip compared to your sinking line? I quite like them. I, so, so sometimes I, I, I'm not quite sure that the, 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 the pleasure of casting with one it sometimes goes out with a bit of a thump and, and yeah. a splash at the end, which You're I don't altogether right like. But um, no, I, I prefer the ordinary conventional double tapered. Um, uh, intermediate uh, slow sink, Intermediate or slow sinking, I think so. Yeah. 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 There are plenty of theories about salmon, and common sense plays a big part too. Peter reckons that a fish may well have worked its way up over the sill of the little stone weir in the night. So he fishes the glides at the tail of the pool, fishing gently, letting the fly move through the water at its own speed. The summer wears on and there's been no rain for a fortnight. The river shrinks in its bed. The fishing changes. Dawn and dusk become the best taking times, and you have to fish tiny flies on light tackle in the streamier, better oxygenated water. The fish tend to be smaller too, though the ones that are fresh in on the tide are lively enough.
This grills took the dropper, an extra fly tied up the leader. Using a dropper is an accepted tactic for low water salmon fishing. It can sometimes give you a chance of a bonus sea trout as well. Low water conditions in summer are certainly not easy for the salmon angler. But it seldom settles down to being dry for any length of time in the west of Ireland, and there's more rain on the way. Tying your own flies adds an extra dimension to fishing. This is particularly true of salmon flies. Very few of them are exact imitations of living things. They are pure products of the creative imagination and often beautiful in their own right. They also have a fascinating history. British dressings are recorded back to the 15th century, though all these early ones seem to have been fairly dull concoctions of feather and hair. Then in the 1840s, a revolution originated in Limerick, in Ireland, and very bright flies using feathers from exotic tropical birds became all the rage. The Donegal fly dressers developed these dressings still further, and many are still in use. But in this century, the revolution has been reversed. American and Scottish influences have meant that modern salmon flies tend to use more hair than feathers, have reverted to sombre colours, and by using improved technology in hook making can be tied on a variety of irons or on hollow tubes which slide on the leader. This is going to be a, a silver rat variant, a North American pattern that does well in the west of Ireland. It's a modern hair wing fly. The dressing starts conventionally enough. A tinsel body and a tail of golden pheasant tippet are tied on the hook, in this case a long shank double iron. There are some universal classic dressings like the rat series, but there are also lots of local flies. Even a small river like the Erif develops its own unique patterns. The genie is a classic 19th century dressing, though it's been modernized as a hair wing. And the silver Erif is one of the local patterns, popular in summer in Connemara. The red shrimp is an exception to the rule that salmon flies are not representational. It's an attempt to imitate the krill, a saltwater crustacean. And the black pennel is primarily a brown and sea trout fly from the last century, which is very useful for low water salmon fishing. Each fibre in the hair wing has to be tamped to the correct length. The original fly used the guard hairs of a grey fox, but this variant uses the stiffer badger hair mixed with grey squirrel. This pattern is unusual because it's got a spun hackle in front of the wing like a trout fly. Nobody has yet come up with a better method of creating a ruff of fine bright fibres than by spinning a small feather round the shank of the hook, a badger coloured cock hackle in this case. The thread which holds all the components together has to be securely whipped to the hook just behind the eye using a special tool. Then the whole whipping is doubly secured with a coating of varnish. And yet another good reason for tying your own salmon flies is that they're much cheaper this way. And you can also incorporate small variations of your own which, who knows, could make all the difference on the day. And finally, the completed fly is put in a safe place for the varnish to dry. And there it is, a silver rat variant, ready for the water.
great big rolling flood is just what the fish and the fishermen have been waiting for. But nothing can happen till it's run its course. The lodge is full of good-humoured impatience and lots of fishing talk. Local experts are much in demand. The Englishman, the Frenchman and the Irishman sounds like the start of a joke, but it's actually a very serious conversation about fly patterns on the doorstep. Well, I used the opportunity of the flood to tie up with you. Yeah. And uh, this is what I came up with. Uh, my first choice would be that fly. It's oh, called yeah. a silver rat. Yeah, very, sil very simple fly, really, yes, yes, as you can yes, see, a silver yes, body and yes. a mixture of grey squirrel yeah. and banter hair. Mm -hmm. That's right. <coughs> yeah, that, that that's silver rat that's too? It on a, that's it on the single hook, yeah? yeah? That, that one would be fine today. Fine. What have you got over here? Well, here I have a blue badger. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a blue badger. That's a blue badger, yes. It that's isn't that. too big. Oh, no, uh, that to me is the correct size today. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Because the water is dropping quickly. Dropping quickly. Yeah, it's dropping off quickly. And, then and you need to go down in size. Is it, a, is it a good fly for today? That that, that's one? a good fly today with this kind of light. Yeah. Yes. You know, a, and it, a it, mixture of um, sunshine and cloud. Oh, yes. That's a very, very effective fly. I thought they were too big. No, they're not. Um, t today, where is it? It's that one on the dropper. One. And that fly on the point. On the point. Yeah, on B4. Oh, yes. B4. Yeah. Do you normally have a smaller dropper or the same size? Uh, I, so, well, it, it varies. Today, I think I'd have the two flies the same size. Oh, will you? Yes. Is a BBO good on the dropper? A, a BBO is a very good fly on a dropper. A BBO or a black pen. Oh, a black pen. Yeah, they're both excellent dropper flies here. Oh, yes. Even in quite small sizes. Yes. I'm going to go inside and get a few smaller flies than the yeah, I told me. Yeah. These are all too they're, big. They're too I big. just put them in here for, you know, mm -hmm. going up the river. Yeah. yeah, they're too big. These will do. It's the 1st of July. The water's in perfect order, fining down after the flood and full of the grills that ran up in the high water. At moments like this, it seems pointless to be doing anything else in the world except fishing for salmon in a beautiful river. With one fish on the grass, Peter can relax a little and enjoy the whole experience. There's something about the clean Atlantic light and the flowing water which distorts time into a long hypnotic daydream. Every season, the Erif produces classic Spate River fishing in the summer. It's not the easiest form of angling in the world, but many people think it's the most challenging and fascinating. They fish on and on, hoping for that magic day when the river finds down and it's full of fish and you're presenting the right fly in the right place at the right time.
I'm not going.